go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Live Magic Q&A. It is me, Madam Pamita. I am here with you and the amazing Spell Squad who are here with me and my special guest. And we're going to be answering your questions and drinking some tea and spilling some tea as, we, as one does about magic, law of attraction, spiritualism, uh, divination, all of the magical arts. We're going to be talking about those things, answering your questions. This is a really special magical time of year. This, this time of year after winter solstice, around winter solstice, is such a magical time of year. And so I hope you get a cup of tea. If you're in the Northern hemisphere, it is winter solstice. If you're in the Southern hemisphere, all bets are off. You're doing some summer reading. You're out surfing right now. You're not listening to me. So <laughs> anyway, we're all cozy here. We've got our warm tea or our hot cup of cocoa or as Pleasant and I have talked about, well, we'll talk about that in a second. We were going to do Drunk Witches podcast, but we'll, we'll talk about <laughs> that later. <laughs> anyway, mine is purely tea in this cup right now. <laughs> I'm not, I haven't hit the bottle yet. So anyway, um, if you are wondering, if you find this on uh, YouTube or some other place and you're wondering, who's this lady in the uh, red and pink sweater with the red holiday tree behind her? Um, what's going on here? I'm Madam Pamita. You can find me online at, at Parlor of Wonders. You can also find me online at madampamita.com. But you can find me at parlorofwonders.com. That's where all my stuff is with doing readings and magic and teaching magic. I've got tons of resources over there for learning about magic, for learning about divination, all kinds of things, videos, how-to guides, podcasts, blog posts. I just made an amazing blog post. That's what I, I was like, there's something I wanted to remind everybody about. I just put up a blog posting about magic that you can do for the new year to bring in luck for the new year with, with traditions from all over the world, many different cultures. It's an amazing, I think it's an amazing resource. This one little blog post to do all these very simple things, but very powerful magical rituals that you can do during this special time of the year. We're getting to be the, the time when I, I will see you next year, the next time I see you. So this is that time of year, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, we want to do uh, some intentions and we're going into a new decade even. So this is a great time to do some really powerful magic about doing setting intentions for this year and this decade of what it is that you want to bring into your life. And I have a beautiful blog posting about that. So I wanted to tell you about that. I also wanted to tell you that um, there was another big announcement that I had this week that I had on the new moon this week. We just had the new moon. And that is that I'm going to be doing in 2020 and possibly beyond, I'm going to be doing a new moon hearth service. So I'm going to be doing a beautiful, beautiful complex candle spells. It's limited edition. It's only, I could be mainly because I only have space and time to do 13 each month. So I'm going to be doing 13 candles each month for 13 people who order those candle spells. It is a hearth service. It is a powerful, powerful service for doing this very kind of personalized magical work, very customized magical work, but also work that aligns with the energy of the new moon and the new moon and the sun being conjunct at that time of the new moon. It's a super, super powerful time to do initiation magic, something that you want to start, something that you want to begin. So I wanted to tell you about that. If you haven't seen my announcements about that or anything like that, I want to remind you that you can check that out by going to my site and going to services. And if you look under services, you'll see candle spells, new moon hearth service, and you can read all about that service. It is something that I'm super proud of, super excited to do. And it's really, really powerful magic that I'm gonna be doing. So if you want me to do a spell for you, of course you, I teach you all the time how to do spells for yourself. But if you feel like you want someone else to do the spell work for you, this is a perfect time for you to jump on that and get involved with that. There's an opening for these um, ordering these spells. So you cannot order these spells until the full moon, the day of the full moon. So the full moon is coming January 10th so that at noon Pacific time, you can order one of these spells and it's first come first serve. Once the spaces are gone, all 13 spaces are gone. It's done. I will close the sales. They'll be done for that month. And then you will wait for the next month and the next month is going to have a whole different flavor. So if you're interested in that, make sure you mark your calendars for January 10th. Be sure to check out my blog posting. You can find that by going to parlorwonders.com. Going under instruction, you'll see magic blog. You'll see the blog posting about <clears throat> the new moon magic. So let me tell you about who we have here today. I've done all my announcements, all my stuff that's going on. Now I'm going to tell you about my amazing, dear, dear friend, Pleasant Gaiman. She is like one of the, she, I have known about her. Didn't know her until the last couple of years, but I have known about her for decades 
because she was a huge celebrity on the LA music scene back in the 80s when I was um, in, you know, this little kid going like, oh my gosh, punk rock and all this music and this is so cool. And she was always in, she was writing columns for the LA Weekly and the woman about town doing all these cool things. And little did I know that our paths would cross because of magic. So she has had a amazing storied life. So like me, we have a lot of parallels, I think, Pleasant. Like me, super into music, but also into magic and into the occult and into um, things that are um, just, gen I just say general magical things, divination and magic and so forth. Then our paths crossed about this because we have mutual friends. And then she started something called Bell Book and Candle, but Bell spelled B E. L-L-E, -L -E, like a beautiful girl, beautiful girl. So Bell Book and Candle is an occult themed burlesque show that she started here in LA a few years back now. We're going to talk about that. And she also has a book called Showgirl Confidential. Let's see if I can get that to show up without a glare. Showgirl Confidential. This is her fabulous book that she's written. She's written many books and she's got a new book coming out. We're going to talk about that. But anyway, that without further ado, I want to introduce you to Pleasant gay man, woman about town, amazing celebrity witch. Can I call you a celebrity witch? Are you yeah, a celebrity call witch? me that. What? <laughs> I didn't hear you. <laughs> so here she is, a pleasant. Thank you so much for coming on the show. So last minute, and you are just the best. You are. I'm so excited to have you on here. Me too. I'm toasting you with my flying monkeys teacup. Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, tell us a little bit about your your story about how you got into divination. I knew you got into divination as a teenager. And how did you get into magic? Because I didn't even know that whole part of your life until the last, within the last five years or so is when I found I know out that's about that. So, I, it's so crazy because like when, and when I knew all about you too, like I knew you were doing witchy stuff, but I think it wasn't until I came back to LA after touring for years and years and years that I started finding out more stuff about people I knew. Uh, like you, you know, um, but I got, I got into all sorts of magic and divination in the seventies when I was like 12, 13, the same, at, at exactly the same time I got into rock and roll. Those were the only two things that pretty much mattered to me. And I was living in a small town on the East coast in Connecticut. And in those days, there wasn't that many books out about, well, there, there probably were, but as like a 12 year old, it was hard to find them, you know, books about tarot or witchcraft. So every so often I would like babysit and mail order, like for a book. I remember I had this one book that I wish I still had. And I, of all the stuff I've kept over the years, I, I've never seen this online. I know the title is correct, but it, maybe, I, it, maybe I just manifested it at that moment. <laughs> It was called Potions and Spells of Witchcraft, and it had a brown cover. It was like, it was amazing. I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. So that and the tarot cards, like I ordered those things both. And the tarot cards that I got was actually the IJJ Swiss tarot. And so there was no booklet in it at the time, and there was no books on tarot that I could find as like a 12-year-old girl with like no car and you yeah, know, yeah. no resources. So I kind of looked at the... Um, at the major arcana and it could sort of tell a little bit what was going on but the minor arcana was all just like a million swords a million you know so i was like i don't know what they, but i just started like trying to make associations around the same time i got a ouija board too and we i used to have seances in my basement and then when i wound up going to boarding school for a while and of course the cards and the ouija board and stuff came with me so you know as well as like all the glitter rock pollution you know what I mean like just like blasting like the Stooges and Bowie and the New York Dolls at full volume and let's play with the Ouija board I mean oh my god well, could I say this thing because I it's so funny that you say that because I feel like that same thing I got well I really had that awakening when I was 10 years old which would have been 1974 for me yeah see this was like around the exact same time. And I tell people, I go, you don't understand how hard you had to work as a child with no money. You know, you get money from- In the 70s. In the 70s, 
there were no books about magic. There were no books about tarot. There were no books. I mean, there were so few and so esoteric that you could, anything I could find, anything I could get my hands on, I was all over it. So I would get books about like ESP and- Exactly. Because that's what they had at the library. That's yeah, where- I ESP, I, I, I stole books from the library. I had to. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But I donate books and things all the time now. So I think my slate is clean. Okay. Yeah, but that's that same thing. It's like, it's so hard to conceptualize how difficult or how- hard you had to work a to find out any information there was no we get so used to this internet world where you can type everything in and how you had to like i said my first tarot deck i got when i was 10 years old my mom bought it for me which my magical mom i mean that's a whole other story but my mom bought it for me we were in salem and i can tell you with absolute 100 percent certainty that that tarot deck was the first tarot deck i'd ever seen because it wasn't like tarot decks everywhere. You can order it online. It's in Barnes and Noble. It wasn't like that in the 70s. It was something so rare and esoteric and so hard to find. So or like I relate from, to from you. The 30s, from, like from the 30s and some old movie where there's a gypsy reading cards. I mean, like, you know what I mean? Like that, that was like, I don't even know how I heard about tarot. I just knew that I, I had to do it. Had to. Me too. I just felt like it was something that, I liked fortune telling, astrology, anything like that. I was super into it. And so to find these things, I'm like, oh, here's fortune telling cards. I don't know how I knew they were fortune telling cards at 10 years old, but I knew they were. And it's so bizarre. And it's so hard to conceptualize. It's like, I feel like, darn you kids, I had to walk five miles in the snow, uphill both ways to school. <laughs> you know, that's what I feel like about, about I, magic, how hard I, it was back then. I say that all the time. And I also say hashtag crone life, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make t-shirts that say that. <laughs> and so you got into magic and then you got into a whole, and then you got into music and you got into a life as a belly dancer. Like you, you, these people don't even know, like you have a huge, huge career she has a huge career as Princess Farana. She has, a, this is the thing I was like in the store buying, looking at DVDs, like exercise DVDs. And here's a, like a belly dancing video with Pleasant on. I'm like, oh my God, she's got, this is like 15 years ago. Oh my God, she's got videos out. That's amazing. And so I bought the video, of course, the DVD, <laughs> of course. But you've got this whole other life as a dancer. And then I'm going to fast forward to currently, like a couple of years ago, three years ago, you started Bell Book and Candles yeah. that, about the time you started yeah, it? Yeah, it was May tw uh, 2017. And so you started Bell Book and Candle as this occult-themed burlesque show. So there's, there's psychics that are doing readings. There's people doing tarot readings. They have a little, you have a little shop there, people vending. It's like this whole happening Ritual once a month. On stage. And then what? The rituals on stage. And like, then rituals on stage. I've done a couple of those rituals. And you have this amazing mashup between the occult world and the burlesque world, which I think is genius. I think it's genius. I, um, well, that, you know, since we were going to talk about manifestation, I'll tell you, I didn't connect different parts of my life to manifestation until Bell Book and Candle happened because that show came completely from a dream. I, I, um, my co-producer is Shana Leilani, and she's a, a witch that works with me also doing tarot and stuff at the Green Man in LA. But we, um, she called me up and I didn't realize it was her and she was asking for Princess Farhana. And I didn't know that it was like the girl that I knew from the Green Man and she only knew me as that. That was kind of how we met because she wanted burlesque lessons. So it, it you know, I'd, I I told her I had a dream about the show and it was called Bell Book and Candle with an E, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. And then when, one day, I we were looking for clubs where you could have a quiet place for psychics as well as a beautiful stage for a dance show. And um, one day I woke up and it was in my head to call Lena Lacaro, who's a, someone that I've known almost as long as you, you know, a, a really long time LA rock scene girl. And it was screaming in my head, call Lena. Lena's going to help you with the club. You have to give Lena a call, call her. And I'd been on the road for like almost 15 years straight, like being in town, maybe three days here, a week there, gone for two months, home for a day. You know, it was crazy. So I didn't even know if I had her number. I texted, hey, Lena, is this you? You know, this is pleasant. If it is, I want to run something by you. And so she calls me immediately and we catch up. 
And then she said, what was your idea? And I told her the idea for Bell Book and Candle. And she's like, oh my God, what a good idea. And she's like, where were you thinking of having it? And I said, I thought you could help me with that, but I keep coming back to one place. And she said, what place is that? And I said, El Cid. And the phone went dead quiet. And then she said, did anyone tell you I started booking it last night? And I was like, what? Like, look, I just got goosebumps again. So she's like, okay, I have a date in two weeks on a Wednesday. Do you want to take it? And I said, only if I can have every Wednesday all summer, because I think it's going to, I mean, every third Wednesday. So I think it's going to turn into a thing. And it did. The first one sold out and it kept going and going and going. And at that point, I realized I connected two other giant events in my life, which I had not connected at all. And I realized that my band, the Scream and Sirens, which was an all-girl band that started in 1982 and toured all over the place and had records out and songs and movies and everything, you know, like that, that was exactly, it came from a dream in my head. And I was like, I need to do this. And the second I said, I need to do this, someone offered to like co-sign for a van. We got signed. I mean, just all this stuff just went bang, bang, bang. It was crazy. Then the next one came about 15 years after that. Someone asked me if I was a belly dancer at a rock and roll show. It was like at a fishbone show. I don't know if you guys in the audience know who that band is, but it was a really cool funk band from LA. This girl asked me in the bathroom, are you a belly dancer? And I'd always been intrigued with it and always wanted to learn it. But like tarot, it was another thing. Like, where do you learn belly dancing in America? You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like in those days before social media. So I, um, I said, why? And she said, you move like one. And I was like, are you a belly dancer? She said, yes. Um, I went and saw her dance. And then since we liked all the same bands, I stalked her at every show. Teach me belly dance, teach me belly dance, teach me belly dance. So we'd be at like after parties at two in the morning holding like margaritas and she'd be showing me. And then I forced her to come to my band's rehearsal studio and I got a bunch of girls together to learn how to do it. And then she kind of stopped and I was like, I need to go to Egypt. As soon as I said that, someone approached me. I mean, not a stranger, it was someone I knew that had gotten into, accepted into a writing program. She didn't know she was gonna get accepted into it and said, if I give you this ticket to Greece, will you go with my girlfriend? I don't want her to go alone. And I was like, you're giving it to me? And she said, yeah. And I turned to the girlfriend and I was like, want to go to Cairo? Like that. She's like, sure. I always wanted to. So I called the airline on a landline because this was like way before, you know, like 9-11 or anything. And I was like, yeah, we're going to change our tickets to include like Athens and in the islands and Cairo. And they're like, okay. You know, as soon as I hung up from that call, this like Swiss roadie, a rock and roll roadie that I'd been letting stay at my house said, hey, I heard you were talking about um, going to Egypt. My brother just got transferred there from Swiss Air. I told him to take care of you. And I thought that meant take me out to tea, you know? But anyway, I quit my job. I told my family I was going to be gone for like eight weeks to, to like three months. Wrote a letter in pen to a hotel in Cairo. Like got ready to go and then like, the guy's brother met us at the airport, saw the hotel, and, oh, no, 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 come and stay with me. And he turned out to be this really fun, crazy, gay show, show tune guy. And I grew up in the theater. So we were singing show tunes and getting drunk. And his apartment was palatial. He gave us his driver because he was a workaholic. I said the words belly dance in Arabic to him. He took me all over the place to see people, to get lessons, to do all this. Then I come home and started working. I mean... And it wasn't until Bell Book and Candle that I was like, oh my God, the band and belly dance and Bell Book and Candle. It was all just like, I was just like, I need to do this. And I, I just said, yes. And it was just like, boom, like that. So I, I had to roll with Bell Book and Candle because how could you not, you know? Like, but the when same you're dream, gonna... Yeah, when your dream tells you to do something like that, then you have to do it. I mean, it's like, a, that's an amazing story. I didn't even know that story. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> and, and then on top of everything else, you're writing a book you've written books, you've written a ton of books, but you're writing a magic book. Aren't you writing something about? Yeah, I'm writing a book um, with Crystal Ravenwolf, who's um, my divination -y partner, and we do ghost hunting together, paranormal investigation. Crystal and I um, just finished like our second draft of, of a book called Walking the Tarot Path. And it's a, um, you know, it's a, it's a learning book on tarot, obviously, but um, 
no offense to anybody that might be listening, but a lot of the tarot books, are, it is so academic and so dry. I mean, yours is not. Yours is amazing because it sounds like you're talking. And I think ours kind of sounds like that too. So it's amazing. Oh my! And when is that going to come out? That tarot book? Well, it's going to come out at some point this year, but um, we're trying to figure out now if we're going with a publisher or, um, you know, we're going to submit it to some publishers. And then if we don't hear from them soon, we'll probably put it out um, on Amazon Create Space Kindle Direct Publishing. I love it. I love it. We got a ton of questions. So I want to get to some questions before we run out of time just telling stories about magic. Yeah, well, I, I, know. <laughs> I could yak on forever. Hi, you guys. <laughs> All right. So we got lots of hellos. And, and Lina pointed out, if you're on a phone, it's you have to click more if you want to do the chat. Thank you, Lina. <laughs> I did it once. I had to be on a phone once and I was like, oh, how do you do this? So I, I couldn't remember what it, but there is a button. If you click more, you can get to the chat. Um, and Katie is in the Southern hemisphere and says it's, it's hot. So if you, um, <laughs> so if you are in the Southern hemisphere, happy summer solstice to you. Um, so Francisco has a question. Hi, Francisco. Um, Hi. So Francisco's question is, about work. And so this is a question in general for people have questions about work and work spells and so on. Um, I don't know what to do next to create a bigger impact. Do you have a ritual suggestion to perform? So what would you do in a spell to have more, I guess, more success with work? The, the, the first thing that I do, and I do this all the time, is I... I don't start off any kind of work without doing like a lot of really, really deep diaphragmatic breathing and thinking of my intention. And by the time that I'm getting ready to like really like start like carving the candle or doing the spell or writing the intentions or whatever, I almost feel like I'm in an altered state. Like I get really, um, is this kind of what you mean, Francisco? Like I, I get, I get, I feel like I'm like trancing when I do it almost. I'm going to unmute Francisco and he can tell us a little bit more. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Francisco. Hi. So this was actually Aide's question right here. Hi. <laughs> oh, Hi. Aide's question. Sorry. Yes. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like I can't really get what I needed to be doing like I just feel like I almost always get it but not completely like I'm always I'm the I feel like I'm I'm the almost I'm so the second place yeah. right? intentions of what you're doing like you're not seeing it hard enough or you or you um or you get part of this spell to work and then it's not working properly uh, yeah like I get part well often I get parts of the spell working out and and it's fine but not to the full potential like kind of I get halfway there and I don't know if I'm sabotaging myself, self-sabotaging or if like what's going on in energetically, what kind of energy I'm sending, what do I need to do differently? I don't really know. And I just want to know. Well, my, I mean, really, like I was saying, my favorite thing is to like really concentrate with deep breathing, like take, take breaths in and hold it for a few seconds, really from your diaphragm and then let it out. And I, I usually do this with my eyes closed because I'm envisioning exactly what I want to happen or if it's like a love spell, like who I want to hap who I want it to happen to, you know? And I just, I really see it as clearly as I can in my head. Even before this spell, before I even do any kind of work, I will be visioning it in my head like every night before I go to sleep. Like I'll set a designated day to do this spell. And I, I just make it almost like obsessive about it, you know, like that's how I get my energy to work. Every person is different though. Like what do you, like there's some things that you can do too. Like there's other smaller things like you can use, like, I mean, I'll use pins and candles or things that are kind of like a physical analogy of what I want to happen. I'll put that all there. You know, like I've even tied, like I've tied things together I've, I've made like my own altar for a certain thing, you know, I'll get, I'll put on music that says exactly what I want. I mean, everyone works differently. Like what would you do, Madam Pamita? Well, I, I think one of the things that comes, I have a question too. Is it, do you think that some, that the, like the boss isn't 
acknowledging you or is it that you aren't feeling confident? Because those are two yeah. kind of different things. So I do, I work for myself. And so that I feel like I often, I don't, I, yeah, just my, the direction that I take is on me, right? So Basically. Not, yeah. Okay, yeah. that answers my question because I, oh. there's, a, there's a certain kind of spell where you want someone to bestow something upon you. You want to influence someone, for example. And if you were working for someone else, then you would do a certain kind of a spell to maybe get the boss to acknowledge you or to see your talents or to promote you or to give you, give you a little edge in that way. But if, if the question, it sounds like then that it's really then the, I'm, I'm putting out a manifestation and then it's just sort of not really coming, all of it's not coming true or I'm not really seeing a strong result. And then if that's the case, yeah. Then That's I would, exactly it. Yeah. Okay. So then that, that, that kind of gives us a direction. So here's what I would recommend. It kind of goes on what Pleasant was saying, that there's, a, there's something very powerful in this sort of situation with actually doing something that brings, continually brings that focus back. So she was talking about doing like every night before she goes to bed, as she's going into bed, which is you can do so much magical work during your sleep time. It's, it's like, it's, it's pretty incredible. It's, yeah. yeah. It's pretty incredible that your sleep time is actually quite useful. I used to always think like, oh, I wish I could stay up 24 hours a day. I'd get so much accomplished. But there's so much that happens on the spiritual level while you're sleeping that your sleep time is quite powerful for what you do. I find very interesting on a non-magical level, whatever I watch, if I watch a television show before I go to sleep, I sometimes work on that television show in my sleep time. I often watch comedies and things like that. So they'll have or mysteries. I watch these like what they're called cozy mysteries, these English mysteries that like Agatha Christie, nothing really dramatic you know, like trying happens. to solve it in your head. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm going around. Yeah. So I was watching these mysteries and I'm like solving clues in my dream. And I wake up in the morning and I tell my boyfriend, I'm like, Oh my God, I was solving clues all night, finding clues all night. So, so your, your sleep time is quite powerful, whether it's like, a, Oh my God, I'm doing this goofy thing. I'm solving a crime in my sleep, but you can also use that magically. So Pleasant's idea of doing that work as you're sleeping, before you go to sleep, you might want to make a little ritual that you do right before you go to sleep, like Pleasant says, where you're talking and saying what it is that you want to manifest. What would be a beautiful thing would be maybe to take that last few minutes before you go to sleep and write in a journal. Write what it is that you wish to happen as if it is a story that's already here. You always have to say it like that too. You always have to say you're already doing it. That's yeah. what I think. Yeah. There's something quite powerful in doing that, that visioning. I, I, I don't know if you know this, but we had, I don't know if you have it where you are. If you've ever seen it, you're really young. You may not have, never have seen this, but there used to be when I was a kid, um, this toy called a slinky, which they still have, which is like a spiral. It's a spring. And you would see this commercial and the spring would go down the stairs and the first part would go down and hit the bottom. And then the second part would follow and then go down to the next step. That energy, which is really kinetic energy is like this idea that I'm on a platform and I'm shooting something out and that something else is going to follow that, 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 that that's what happens when we do an intention, when we do a manifestation, when we're doing magic, it's a lot like a slinky. We put the intention out there and then all those things line up so that we end up with our occult burlesque show or we end up with our band that gets signed to our label or we end up with a successful business or whatever intention we are having. So as you know, Lina pointed out, I think Lina made a comment. She said, yeah, she did. Don't allow the doubt to creep in. You want to yeah. keep feeding it. You want to keep feeding it with that positive energy and that intention and let the let everything line up and follow it so that you put the thing that you're putting out there is the intention and then all the circumstances will line up to feed that intention but that's how law of attraction works and that's how magic works really you don't need anything a adept magician does not need anything except the pure intention if you can keep your focus on that intention then everything will line up but what happens is is that we go I want to have a million dollar a year business. And then you're like, I don't have any customers. Maybe my business idea is bad. 
maybe it's not going to happen for me. Oh, oh, what's going to happen? How am I going to pay my bill? All that doubt sort of dissolves that very focused, positive energy that you once had at the beginning. So because of that, because there is this, I think the idea of doing that repetition of the positive intention every night where you write it out, write out the story of the success, write out the story of what you want to have, because there's a lot of levels of magic that go into it. First of all, your thought, which is very quite, quite, quite powerful. Second, you're committing to it. When we write something, there's a reason that a contract that is written has more power than a contract that we speak or say, even though our, our words are quite powerful. But you know, you have a document, you have a physical manifestation when you write something down and that can also feed and energize that idea. So the writing process is quite powerful. I put and, it under my pillow too. I write like, a, I usually write like a, I cut out a little heart and write what I want and put it under my pillow. That's so good. That's a, that's another beautiful thing. I mean, these things are not even expensive spells. These are things you can do. No, with it's just like, yeah, exactly. It's not a piece of paper. Punk that rock magic. Punk, <laughs> exactly. DIY, right? So, um, I know, I think that I honestly think pleasant. So funny, like the punk rock, rock aesthetic always like do it yourself, do it yourself. It's such a, a part of what my consciousness is and it's, as it is for you too. It's why I'm always teaching people how to do their own magic. I do magic for people, but I teach people how to do magic because I want you guys to do it, empower yourselves. So that idea that you're writing something, you're committing to something, you're creating a contract, you're creating, um, your, your, you're really putting your energy into something and then you're writing it down. Then you also have that energy of the dream time that you're going to be doing this right before you go to sleep so that your dreams can help you to come up with ideas. Oh, I don't know how to find more customers. Oh, I had this dream where I was blah, 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 blah. And that is the thing that solves the problem for you. I mean, this is something that has absolutely nothing to do with magic. I mean, it has to do with magic, but we see this in the material world often where people talk about they had a scientific discovery because they had a dream or they had a solution to the story that they're writing a novel. What, what, they, what were they going to do with the novel? And they had a dream. So it's the idea that your dream time and your dream work can be quite powerful. Now, if you are a person who doesn't remember your dreams, then in the morning, write down, maybe even in the same book, you could be writing down the night before your, your vision of what it is for you, you want for your business. And then the next day, write down what you dream, anything that you remember. Sometimes you might just have an impression or a feeling or something very vague. But if you continually write those down, then you'll start to remember your dreams more lucidly, more um, completely as you wake up. And those dreams can offer symbols or ideas, or you can get visitation from spirits, ancestors, or your spirit guides. All kinds of magical things can happen in your dreams, and those dreams can help you if you have that intention beforehand that you're going to work on this problem with your business or your career, and then you can get those solutions in your dreams. That's a fabulous working right there. I mean, this is not the only way, certainly not the only way to do a working for a business thing, but just ripping on what Pleasant said, which was so amazing. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a whole working that you can do in your dream time. And if, if part of the problem is your own consciousness that you're having doubts or that you're having disbelief or you're not sure, you know, can I do it? Is it possible? This can be a transformative thing for you. It, it, it sounds simple, but it's something that requires diligence and discipline and that you do that work consistently and you will start to see that result. And the one, the last thing I would add to it is I would say, um, have that consciousness that you're going to have the perfect outcome and perfect timing. Whether you create that contract with the universe, if you see that you're working with a deity or you're working with spirit or you're doing whatever, but just say perfect outcome and perfect timing. And that will lower the anxiety you may have about things not happening right this red hot minute, because sometimes that impatience can work against you. The eagerness is good, but if it turns into impatience of like, why isn't it happening? Maybe I've made a mistake or you start to get into a negative spiral because of the impatience. That's not great. Yeah. But that's, that's common though. Like you, you have to believe in your own magic and your own capability because I think nowadays too, there's so much stuff you have to do this or this has to get done at a certain hour. Like there's so much information about magic right now that sometimes it's hard for you to believe that what you're doing is as magical as some spell someone puts on Pinterest. You yeah. Know? I mean, you know what I mean? Like, like uh, that whole competition <laughs> thing with all the social media makes me cuckoo. It totally makes me cuckoo. Um, we, I forgot to mention, Pleasant's going to be doing a reading 
at, at the end of our session today, oh, you're yeah. going to do a little tarot reading. I totally forgot to mention that. Pleasant, what emoji or what word do you want them to put to say that they're interested in having been in the, in the, con, in the, in the sweepstakes? The crystal ball <laughs> emoji, of course. Crystal ball emoji or write the word crystal ball if you don't have the emojis handy. And I get stressed you. when that falls out of my frequently used emoji. I was like, no, I haven't. <laughs> Your life has gotten off track, lady. <laughs> All right. So um, Angela has an amazing question. She says, does Pleasant have any magical rituals or traditions for the new year? You've seen mine. I've shown you mine in my blog post. But what do you do for New Year's? Do you do anything? Uh, well, I already started doing it. Um, I mean, I do, I definitely do it. I do, I do old school, like folky magic. I just like, okay, believe me when I tell you that my biggest talent is making a mess. I'm not kidding. Last night I tore down all my curtains and, and washed them and got everything clean. And then I like was washing windows this morning and I never do stuff like that willingly. My mantra is I need servants. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So that was one prep. Um, I always like, I like, I sage and Palo Santo out the whole house. I, um, I set New Year's intentions. I started setting intentions at the, at the new moon because I felt like this moon was magical because it starts in one decade and finishes in another, you know? I was like, this is a good bridge, you know? I'm just going to go sliding across it. And then when I was saying I do folk magic, this is just kitchen witching, but I always eat Hop and John on New Year's morning. And um, Hop and John is just, it's black eyed peas and greens. And I always put a bunch of like ginger and um, hot peppers and stuff in it to get it going faster. And I'm a vegetarian, so I don't put any kind of bacon in it, but you could. But I mean, it's, you're supposed to eat it for like wealth and love and um, prosperity and abundance. And I will never not have that on New Year's, it, you know, even. Yeah, that's one of the things that I put, Hop and Jama was one of the things that I put in my list good? of magical foods in my blog. Yeah. I, have, I went and looked in all different cultures at like what the traditions are with food for, um, I mean, there's a lot of things that I suggest in that blog post. I thought, you know, an idea was like dress up in the, outfit of what it is that you want to manifest like if you're not going out to a party you might want to dress in something that like is the manifestation of what it is that you want to achieve for the year um but also the food can be really blessed i mean food is an underrated magical tool and that that idea of doing i think we can do that every day like we can make our oh, yeah. drink magical our food magical and doing that that hop and john is such an old down home southern tradition for doing uh, magic of abundance for the year it's a really really beautiful ritual that you can enact so i have a ton of them all different kinds of you know coming from and talk about the different cultures that they come from where they come from all the things that you could incorporate as a thing but i love the hop and john one that's amazing and of course you can make a vegetarian yes you yeah. can yeah 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 so i i, I just do it with veggie stuff I mean, what's the other, I don't know, New Year's, this whole, like you were saying, this whole time period is really, it's really magical. It's, and especially now that a new decade's beginning, which I was so busy this year, I didn't even realize it until like three weeks ago. I was like, hey, <laughs> like, wow, it's been. I know, I know. I, I, you know, what's really interesting. I'm reading an amazing book right now and it's called The Old Oh Gosh, it's called The Old Magic. I'm reading on, on an ebook right now. It's called The Old magic the old christmas the old magic of christmas i think is what it's called it's an amazing book it's very european looking at european christmas traditions but it looks at those traditions that start in really from the time of the witch's new year from october the end of october yeah. all through november into december and through the new year into the dark beginning time. of january yeah and that dark time of the year and all like the spirit work that happens it's really spirit oriented time and so like all, all the work that you can do really you know like we think of like the veil is the thinnest at halloween the veil is thin at halloween but this whole dark time is a time in the northern hemisphere it is a time of connecting with the spirit realm and there's magic with you know tom ten and trolls and and spirits and all kinds of things and it's such a good book it's i'm like super into this book like all this book inspires me to do is like want to do okay 
I'm going to do Michaelmas. I'm going to do Christmas. I'm going to do this. I want to do all those little windows of opportunity and all these ancient, ancient traditions for connecting to magic and connecting to the spirit realm during this time. So it's just a magical time. And I don't think you have to like go, oh my gosh, I missed Halloween. That was my one time to contact my ancestors. No, you can, this whole season is that time of doing that very inward work, very mysterious work, very deep work. So it's just a, I love bringing those traditions up. So I'm going to be writing maybe more about that. I've got some other blog posts that I'm going to be doing and all of that jazz. Um, so um, I got another question. Uh, Vivian there. Hi, Vivian. And Vivian wants to know when my book is coming out and that is going to be coming out in October of 2020. So in October of 2020, my book, which is called The Candle Magic Book. The Candle Magic Book. I can't book. wait for that. <laughs> I am super, can I just say one thing about it? I'm super excited about this book. It's kind of my dream come true because it's a hard cover book. It is not a paperback book. Oh, wow. It is a real hard cover book. And it is, they showed me, I, I kind of pitched some ideas for the cover. And, um, the, and I said, I want it to look Art Nouveau. And it looks like an old book from like the turn of the century. It is so exciting to me. It's like, oh my God, it's like perfect. It's Art Nouveau, golden, golden silver imprinted on this plum colored binding and it's hardcover it's like oh my gosh it's my fantasy book so i'm super super excited about it but that's coming out in october i worked really hard on it you guys and i and i'm really proud of it and i think it's going to be an amazing book not just a book of recipes it it breaks it down for you on everything involved in doing a candle spell how you can do it so how you can instead of teaching you giving you a recipe book it teaches you how to be a chef it teaches you the principles behind why do we choose a color what co the colors mean why do you do a moving candle spell why do you do a, a spell over several days or do it one day so that you can understand and then you can go oh okay i'm gonna consider this thing and this thing and this thing to support my personal intention so it's it's a book that does not exist out there in terms of candle magic and i'm super excited about it but anyway enough about that um We've got some people come saying that they want, we have actually two people have saying they want to read. Maybe we could do two readings. Yeah, yeah. You think we could do two readings? Uh -huh. um, all right. So we'll, if anybody else wants to get in, then we'll have a contest. But if it's just the two of you, we, we could do two little readings. I'm sure we could do that. Um, Vivian has a question. Oh, so Vivian, if you I'm want a to begin. Or a question? No, we have a question first before okay. we do the reading. If is right after someone t dies a good time or a bad time to ask them for help? Is it a good time or a bad time to ask them for help? I, I think I, I like to act like they're really, I mean, they are really traveling. So I, 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 I would tend to wait a little bit. If they're giving you signs, and signs could be anything from like coins to a feather to a voice in your head or a dream. Like if they're giving you signs that they want to communicate, then communicate with them. But I would let them get a little bit settled in their new place before asking them for help. I mean, that, that's the way that I see it, you know? It, same with me. My experience has been when somebody passes their transitioning, yeah. it's not, that whole continuum of death is fascinating. And if you watch someone, especially not someone that dies instantly or suddenly of something, but if they're transitioning, like say decline and then going into death, it isn't like, on off like a light it is a decline into that other spirit realm uh, and then going into that spirit realm and so i i always find you can ask of course you can ask but if you don't get a response right away from them then um wait a little while you know there's a lot of traditions where they wait 40 days yeah. or there's you know they wait a certain amount of time and you know there's a reason for that and i think you know i don't think you have to be so necessarily so precious that you're like it has to be 40 days, but I, I agree with Pleasant. You, you give them time to respond to you and, and say, you know, that they're ready. Yeah. So yeah, sometimes they're right there, but other times just, I mean, the way that, I mean, the analogy that I would draw is like, let's just say they're on a plane and you have to have your cell phones off. And then when you land, you get, you might be a little bit jet lagged. I, I just, give them time to get used to that realm, to meet everyone else, all the other ancestors, to like understand their powers or to, you know, like there's, but if you're seeing signs of communication and there are tons, um, you can look, you can even look that up, like spirit communication. Like if, if you turn on the radio and, 
and like your grandfather died and it was his favorite song is like right when you turn it on i mean that is definitely a sign i don't believe in coincidences like that you know yeah yeah i think there's like there's definitely like for me with i do a lot of dream work and i i do a lot of spirit contact and dreams so i'll dream about dead people often that they have conversations my parents would dream i would dream about them often where we they would be a different kind of a dream it's not a normal dream when you're dreaming with spirit contact it has a different texture to it and so they'll come to you and they'll give you messages oftentimes it's very interesting because like my parents would come back and say it would be i had this dream more than once where i'm like mom i thought you were dead and she's like no i'm not dead i'm fine or I'll go, dad, I thought you were dead. And he says, no, no, no. But my favorite dream, I have to tell you, this one is so hilarious. My dad, my dad was a very scientific sort of person. He was engineering. He was into engineering, electrical engineering. He had a workshop in my, our garage. And um, he, he was really a scientific guy, right? So when he passed away, he, my mom passed away first, then my dad passed away. When my dad passed away, we were at the mortuary. Um, he was going to be buried. My mom and dad are both buried. Um, in a cemetery and we they were like okay we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that we're gonna embalm him I'm like why are we gonna embalm him we're not you know we're not gonna have an open casket there doesn't it seems really weird and invasive I didn't and the guy said yeah you don't have to embalm them because we keep them the bodies refrigerated then we bring it out for the funeral and then we bury them so there really is no need for the embalming I'm like okay great then let's just not do it because it feels weird and creepy to me and so my sister was in agreement. We were fine with it. So then we didn't involve my dad. So in my dream, my dad is, we were in my old bedroom when I was a kid and we were, um, my dad was there and I'm like, dad, I thought you died. And my dad says, no, no, they've invented this thing that they can, this scientific thing that they can bring people back to life. And then I went to my dad, I am so glad I didn't embalm you. <laughs> That was my dream. I was like, oh my God, that I made the right choice. So yeah, my dad and my little daddy came and visited me in dreamland. So that was very sweet and funny. And I woke up laughing. I thought, oh my God, that's so funny. When my so, mom was dying, like she, um, before like about a week or two before she passed, maybe two weeks, she was, she was, she would, she would wake up and she would just tell me these dreams. And it was obvious, like heaven transitioning spirit like she was seeing relatives that had been dead for like since she was little and i don't want to say it to her because she doesn't believe in a, or she didn't believe in a lot of the stuff that i do but i was like wow she's like we were in this beautiful room and she's describing it and she's describing people that were like passed on before i was ever even alive and i was like whoa she is so getting ready you know like this yeah yeah I mean, I think it, it's so funny that our, our conversation has been so much about dreams in this uh, yeah. today, but that is really an interesting thing about, and that's the thing that I was saying is like when people are dying, they are not, unless there's a sudden death, like they get shot or, you know, something instant. Fire accident. But guillotine. No. Yeah, exactly. Guillotine. So if something is happening where they're transitioning, you know, because their body is failing, you can see almost like that is not, it's a continuum. It's on a line. It's not like alive and then dead and that's why it wasn't until like in the last 20 30 years that they go okay we someone is dead when their brain dead it they didn't have a moment where someone was dead they couldn't identify because the just because the breath stopped didn't necessarily mean that the brain had stopped and all these things so they did they made up this arbitrary thing is when the brain stops that's when the person is dead but there's a continuum there is it is not like one moment you know so all right so Let's, are you ready to do some readings? Yeah. Now we have people and now we have to do, so don't look at the chat. We've got one, two, three, four, five people that are interested. So you have to pick a number between one and five, including one and five. So pick a number. I can't just do like one card for everyone because it's the holidays. Oh, of course you can, generous girl. Okay, so the first one, should I just tell you their names and then yes. you'll do one for each one? Okay, so the first one is Lina. So I'm going to put your, I'm going to pin you. And so you're going to pull a card for Lena and give her a, a quickie. Okay, Lena. I'm shuffling for you right now. You get the star. Mm. This is about what, this is a great card for right before New Year's for the future. It's, it's all about your dreams and wishes coming true. It's 
like you feeling like you're divinely guided. Um, if, if you've been listening to our dream talk, it's listening to your dreams. And then it's also um, doing some of the work in real life to help the dreams manifest, really doing it, not, not just daydreaming, but just it's like, like understanding that like you can create what you want. Beautiful. I love that. All right. Next one is Amanda. Okay. Amanda, let's see what you got. Get the Knight of Cups. So if you're not connected to anybody, there could be somebody coming for you. Um, this is also about your empathy, your love, your romanticism. Um, it's taking care of people you love, being around people you love. It uh, has a lot to do with your intuition and your emotions. So really listen to your intuitions. And um, Sir Lancelot of Cups is going to come and help you manifest them. I love that. Okay, Vivian wants a reading too. Okay, Vivian. I love that name so much, Vivian. Oh, it's such a beautiful name. It's a magical name, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's magical. It's got the Ten of Pentacles. Um, this is about your family, family traditions, family legacies. If you're not down with your real family, it could be uh, traditions and things that you create with the chosen family. It's also, um, it could be some kind of money coming to you in a surprise way. It's also celebrations. There's a lot of history and tradition to pass down with this card too. So this could be also doing work with your ancestors. Love that. All right. <clears throat> Nello. Nello says, please, please, please. Hi, Nello. <laughs> I used to sit next to a girl in second grade named Nella, and she was Italian from Sicily, and that's why I forced my mom to get my ears pierced when I was eight. <laughs> this is Nello, Nello with an O. Oh, Nello. Okay, well, still, it was almost. <laughs> yes, there is no. Okay, Nello, you've got the seven of wands, and this is about speaking your mind. In the olden days, this used to mean strength against rivals or adversaries. So hopefully you don't have them, but if you do, this is all about your personal convictions. It's about really figuring out where you stand on issues in life, all that kind of stuff. It's a very strong card. Notice this is the one tarot card that he's got two different shoes on. I always thought that was crazy. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, yeah. I love that. Like, cause you know that that wasn't just a mistake drawing that she, that she came back to, but, um, Really, wands is all about your passion and your fire and your will to do things. So um, if you feel like you're not being heard for any reason, like speak out and just understand what all your personal beliefs are and stick by them. Uh, okay, next one is June. June. Wow, that's crazy. You got the star again, too, and I shuffled it a lot. <laughs> this is, this is like a, that's can i just say this is the spell squad so you should get used yeah. to the beat all magical <laughs> no i know all that kind of stuff. yeah 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 okay so the same as what i said earlier the star is about manifestation of your dreams it's looking forward to the future with like just understanding that the universe is going to provide for you like everything is going to come to you in a beautiful wonderful shiny way it's literally beaming down magic upon you. Um, you have to continue doing the work in real life, whether it's magical work or work to get your dreams done. That's like, you know, more physical, more mundane. But the star is really there to help you. She's got one foot on land and one foot in the water. And that's the way that we are all living here in Spell Squad land. Yeah, big time. <laughs> um, Francesco, is it for you or for ID? So you, Francesco, okay. Okay. Francisco, you got Page of Swords. You are fully, yeah, yeah, yeah I saw you. Like, <laughs> you're, you're ready for whatever 2010 has in store for you. 2020, not 2010, yeah, 2020. girl. <laughs> Wait, I wasn't thinking of 10. I don't know, because I'm old. Hashtag Chrome Life. No. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you're completely, um, you're ready. You've got all that sharp, <laughs> sword energy going on like you know what you want you know how to get it and um with this card also there's um there's a lot of like improvising you can think on your feet you can sort of like meld any kind of situation into what you want if it's not exactly what you want 
So you're just um you're you're just like you you're gonna take take it and make it yours. Ah, oh, I love that. I love that. So tell everybody where they can find you. All the places that I mean, you have you're a little bit like me that you have a thousand irons in the fire <laughs> like I do. A million projects going on. So we're gonna have a minute. It's gonna take a minute. But okay. where are all the places that they can find you in real life, online, what's coming up, all of those things. Okay, so my website is pleasant, P-L-E-A-S-A-N-T, Gaiman, G-E-H-M as in man, A-N as in Nancy, pleasantgaiman.com. There's a tarot page on there. There's rock and roll stuff on there. There's all sorts of things on there um that you can start with that on facebook i'm pleasant gaiman and you don't send me a friend request i mean of course send me a friend request but i don't look at them i don't want to sound like an arse but there's so many of them i can't even look anymore so if you like something that i write make a comment on it and or just say that we met on spell squad and i will add you um also on facebook there's the divination nation and that's um, my friend, Crystal Ravenwolf, and I have that page. It's a witchy page, and it's about divination. On Instagram, I am Princess of Hollywood, all one word. Then I pull a tarot card every night for the next day. And there's a lot of magic-y stuff and a lot of stupid, fun, crazy rock and roll stuff. And <laughs> way too many pictures of my cats. And, um, you know, it's, it's a... It's a it's a conglomeration mashup of everything we've been talking about. Also, on Instagram, there is a um, there's a page for Bell Book and Candle, the witch burlesque show. But it's this one has so many underscores because there's a lot of Bell Book and Candle. So it's B E L L E underscore book underscore and underscore candle. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, but also there's a link to it on Princess of Hollywood, so it's easier if you just click that and then hit follow and then. On both of those, I always follow back. If you're on Twitter, I'm under Pleasant Gaiman One, and um, that's my that's my general account. And then Crystal and I also have Tarot Alima L A I M A H, which in Arabic means um, learned, knowledgeable, or magical woman. That's why it's called that. <laughs> um, where else am I? I don't know. I'm all over the Well, to, in real life, when does Bell, Book, and Candle happen? Oh, in real life, if you're in LA, Bell, Book, and Candle is on the third witchy Wednesday of every month at a club called El Cid, which was one of the first Hollywood sound stages and very super haunted. Um, and on my Instagram, there's always when the next Bell, Book, and Candle is. So if you're seeing that. And El Cid is spelled like El Cid, C-I-D, and not S-I-D. Yeah, E-L... No, no. E L and then next word C I D. Yes. And then you do readings also at the Green Man. At the Green Man store, which is in Los Angeles in the San Fernando Valley. And I'm starting a tarot, um, an eight week tarot series this Sunday, which um is the fifth. Also, if you're in the LA area, there's a psychic fair at the Green Man on this coming Saturday, the fourth. So if you want a little mini reading that was bigger than this one, but smaller than a normal one, I'll be there <laughs> doing like, like nonstop readings all day. And then the tarot class starts on, the, on Sunday the 5th from 2 to 4 p.m. at the Green Man Store, which is the Green Man Store online. Or if you're in LA, the address is um, 5712 Lancashire, L-A-N-K-E-R-S-H-I-M Boulevard. And don't, like the San Fernando Valley, it's like right near the arts district of North Hollywood. Yeah. That's like right near kind of Hollywood and Universal Studios and all that yeah. stuff too. Yeah. Exactly. Uh -huh. That area, that part of town. This was such an amazing pleasure to have you, the Spell Squad to meet you, for you to meet the Spell Squad, for us to get together in this super magical time between the Christmas holidays and Hanukkah and New Year's and all of that stuff. So this is such a beautiful time of magic. And for you to be here with me, Pleasant, was just the best. I just, you know, I love you. We are- I know we have to see each other in real life more. I know, we're like sisters from another mister. You are so, so special and so dear to me. And 
to have everyone get to know you a little bit and for you answering these amazing questions. You guys had some amazing questions today. I'm sorry we didn't get to all of them. There were a couple more that I didn't get to, but we ran out of time. We were having so much fun. That's what always happens. So um, thank you again so much, beautiful lady, for being here with me. You know, I adore you and I'll see you, I'm sure, very soon. <laughs> You just gave that kiss to everybody. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Thank, you so it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. I adore you. And I hope you'll come back again sometime. You oh, know, I will. Know. Whenever you want me, baby. Yeah. Me. Oh, and, and also tell them about, we see you're, you have a million things going on. Your podcast. You got a podcast. We didn't even talk about that. Oh, my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, it's called The Devil's Music. It's, um, it's not starting till February probably, but it's all rock and roll and occult. So it's not up yet. Um, but, um, Madam Pamita is going to be on it. Yeah. Or I'm going to be a lot. She'll be, she'll be a recurring guest. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's about me. I mean, like she does these amazing mashups between magic, the magical world and other worlds that we experience that we consider material, but how all this stuff blends and it, it, like Bell Book and Candle was such a revelation to me. I'm like, of but of course it makes complete sense. How come no one thought of this before? Because it took Pleasant and her, her genius mind to come up with this. So I thank you for being in this world and making these magical things in this world because if it weren't for you, these things wouldn't exist. And this is the message really for all of you out there is that the things that you create, the things that you make, you are unique and you are special and you what you make no one else can make so when we think of those things of like am i is, is there a reason for me to be here yes and for the answer is a resounding yes because the things that you come up with the things that you create are things that are completely unique to you unless you're going around copying and hopefully you're not doing that but you're actually coming up with your own unique things you are a gift to this world and you you sharing your gifts in whatever way you do it whether you're an accountant whether you're an artist whether you're a musician whether you are a person who digs the ditch you have a gift to give to this world and you make the world what it is and i am so very honored and so in love with you that you are here with us at our, at our get togethers here at the, the Q&A and the spell squad is a very dear thing to me. So I thank you for being here and thank you for being here. Pleasant. You are amazing. And I will hopefully see you guys. I hope to see you guys. I will be here next week, next, next Monday, year. Same time. <laughs> next year. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Next decade. See you next decade. Um, <laughs> I'll be here on the fifth and our, our guest next week is going to be Jackie Smith of Coventry creations, Coventry candles. She's the one that has amended the candles that Coventry creations makes. She has been doing witchcraft and having a business for a long, long, long time. She's amazing. She's written amazing books. So you'll definitely want to be here. We had, we are going to talk about candle magic. We're going to talk about all kinds, kinds of magic for sure. But if you have candle magic questions, that is the place to be. So I hope I see you guys next week. Thank you, Pleasant. Thank you guys, Spell Squad guys. Thank you for your amazing questions. And I'm so, you were so generous, Pleasant, to do a little mini reading for everyone. What a, what a gorgeous heart you have. I love you. Love you. I love you all, you guys. Have a great, great New Year's. Happy New Year. I, I send power to all of your intentions for the new year, that all of your dreams, all of your wishes come true. And I will see you on January 5th. I believe it's January 5th that our yes. next meeting is Sunday, next Sunday. Hope to see you soon. I hope to see you then. And have a beautiful, beautiful New Year's, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.